we're not creating a gank box. We're not creating a murder box. There are there is a flagging system that's in place that highly disincentivizes just outright murder. We, however, do want to see conflict uh, erupt, and we do want to see that conflict have a system to 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 see out what the result will be. Astro Creation has this one massive problem that they'll need to overcome if they want to be this gigantic smash success in the MMO space that they're kind of aiming to be. As Taylor Swift so iconically said, it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. Not me specifically, but the archetype of players that I represent. The MMO player who is desperate for a new MMO and is intrigued by much of Ash the Creation. But when they hear always on PvP, they remember the mixtures of frustration and yes, exhilaration in games like Ultima Online, Shadowbane, Old World PvP servers and WoW, and many more. How more often than not that always on PvP meant being one-shotted by players magnitudes higher level than you or killed 10 to 1 by a roaming band of player killers. Not the glorious open world battles conjured in the mind's eye, just simply easy pickings for slaughter. But there's one big thing here. I think the concerns might be born more from perception and marketing more than actual reality. And perhaps in the end, the Ash of Creation players who might be most upset with the game might actually be those very same players hoping to be able to grief indiscriminately in the heyday of Shadowbane or Ultima pre Tremel. And before I stir up the hornet's nest, no, I am not using this video in any way to advocate for any changes of Ash Creation. I'm just trying to give my perspective of how things, how things are being perceived by this player, this type of player, me, the 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 type of player, the type of MMO player that I embody, the the player that is really intrigued by the PvE in Ashes of Creation, by the beauty of Ashes of Creation, and even interested in the PvP aspects, the, the way that nodes are going to work, the caravans, all that stuff, but is a little nervous about the, the same kind of PKing, the, the rampant use of, of player killing that ends up in one player being happy and the other not. And I and I say this being someone that actually just recently backed Ashes of Creation. I backed it, I think, in January of this year. And after like, you know, finally getting over my uh, my gripes about Apocalypse, but I, I backed it largely because I want to support indie MMOs and I want them to succeed. My concerns around the PvP parts of Ash Creation started most keenly in 2022 when Ash Creation burst onto the scene and surpassed other Kickstarter MMOs and even other AAA MMOs in popularity. Not that it was like it had just come out then. No, it's been it's been around for a while. I, I mentioned Apocalypse. Yeah, I've been following this game for a while and I kind of lost a lot of faith in it for a bit. But in in that time frame, the the the, the post covid time frame, it kind of just like exploded in this popularity and it looked really good. A lot of this was probably with like them showing off their really intricate weather systems, their Unreal Engine 5 graphics and, and much more, their, their interesting take on combat, and it was definitely helped by glowing reviews from huge creators like Lazy Peon and Asmongold with their dedicated audiences. And it's for good reason. Not only does the game look fantastic, but its node system feels like a breath of fresh air if it can truly differentiate itself from New World's city control system largely because this has kind of gone out of fashion since Star Wars Galaxies and Shadowbane were pioneering it all the way back in 2003. It also promises to have what could be very interesting PvE content with their story arc system. I'm still personally on the fence with commissions, but the organic side quests also sound like a lot of fun. And then you get to the PvP. On its face, PvP sounds awesome. Over my time in MMOs, I have enjoyed engaging in sieges, even if most of the time those sieges kind of end up just being like ranged fights that go on for hours. I've also loved big and small PvP battlegrounds and arenas in a structured team oriented setting or even 1v1 dueling. But in all of that, it's been the most fun for me when I am choosing to PvP. And honestly, yes, when there's at least some semblance of balance. I grew up on Ultima Online and Shadowbane alongside EverQuest and SWG, and I even spent years in World of Warcraft. In fact, World of Warcraft for a long time became the game I subscribed to not for PvE, 
but to go and engage in some kind of PvP to kind of scratch that itch of PvP. I'm not coming into the Azure Creation hype with no experience in the genre or its extremes. And that's when it breaks down for me. The extremes which are driven by player behavior. Always on PvP has a tendency to lean toward one-sided PvP, especially in an open world. At its heart, this generally means that one player, or the players on the power side, will be getting enjoyment out of an encounter, and the other player or players on the other side will simply not. I don't care how much into PvP you are, the, the enjoyment doesn't come when you're getting your face kicked in, it just doesn't. You may get enjoyment of getting revenge in some way, but it's not fun for anyone when you lose hours of progress without really any opportunity to fight back. And to be clear with this, what I'm referring to is the kind of crap that I personally used to pull when I played Shadowbane as a kid. When I would, when I was an assassin and I would go up to a camp, and I would, you know, no one could see me, I was hidden. And I would just sneak up behind someone sitting, because Shadowbane had double damage when you got when you were sitting, and I would stab them and one-shot them and take all of their loot. And I would do this to someone that had probably been camping that one camp for a rune for hours. And then I would take the rune too. So I would come upon them, take all of their hours and hours of work. And they had no chance, no opportunity to do anything. Alternatively, when it happened to me, which is probably why I went and did that, is back in Ultima Online when I'd go out and try and mine something or, or kill some like low level skeletons because I was kind of shit and I would play to a pro Provo Bard. Well, I would do that and then some a group of a bunch of red PKs would run by and I'd be dead in one shot. I'd be dead before I knew it to some combo of flame strike and, and e-bolt. And yes, of course, you can say all the time like, oh, yeah, we'll just get good. But that's the thing of it. I don't want to. If that's if that's if that is the the payoff is is going and taking and I like actually engaging with PvP is just running over people that are no challenge. This just sounds boring to me. And one thing that I really wanted to add here with this, the idea of always on PvP and essentially the fear of being player killed or ganked by someone is back in Ultima Online, one of the things it would lend itself to is that if you weren't a spec that could handle PvP or handle being PK'd, you were at a disadvantage and thus it kind of like shrank those professions or it made it so it was a bit more of a difficult thing. Yes, there was obviously the added fear when you're going out and harvesting things, but it also meant myself as a Provo Bard. Well, provocation was a fantastic skill in PvE. It was a skill where you could essentially make NPCs fight each other. It was also completely and utterly useless in PvP. It led to a homogenization of builds where people were mostly just being mages because that was the best thing to do in PvP. You could deal with it better, you could escape better, you could lure people in better. It really just shrank down what was viable in the game. Because the overwhelming thing was, it doesn't matter how good you are in any given thing if you're just gonna get killed by PKs. This isn't battle, it's a slaughter. And that is very often what player behavior dictates in games like this. When the world allows it, it will happen and it will come at a cost of PvE in many cases. This is the point where supporters of Ash Creation will point to the PK system. Sorry, I mean corruption system. And this is where it gets interesting, because the corruption system is designed in a way that I can actually see working? This is where we get to the point of messaging about Ash Creation and the perception of it. Right or wrong, Ash of Creation is seen as a PvP first game. And it is in a lot of ways with a lot of the systems catering to it. But the corruption system as written could perhaps deeply mitigate the most negative side of always on PvP, griefing. Or, as we'll find out here in a sec, could actually make it a little bit worse. I've sat with the corruption system for well over a year now. I even covered it in my concerns video on Ashes where I essentially asked, what's the point? because one of the most potent parts of the corruption system is how it decreases your ability to, well, do that very thing. Its potency felt like it could be done so heavily handedly that it eliminates the threat and worry of griefing. When I look over at the penalties for corruption, which in short is the negative effects you get from being dishonorable in PvP, like going red in Ultima Online, the thing that stands out to me most is the loss of PvP efficacy. 
And while it does sound like it might take some time to be completely useless in PvP due to corruption, it will still be more punishing the more dishonorable it is as level disparity amplifies the corruption gained, so the worst offenders will have the most significant downside. The corruption system in Ash of Creation is one of, if not the most complex system like this I've seen which tries to strike a balance between consensual PvP and non-consensual PvP. But the more I read on it and the more I watch about it, the more I feel like it leans very heavily into really the consensual PvP side. The negatives to griefing, depending on how they dial in the numbers, at least are intense. PvP is going to be an essential part of Ashes of Creation. It's key to the DNA of the game with their node system and caravans. It makes sense that in these instances, you could simply have combatants and non-combatant toggle to combatant without the need for a third corruption status. But I wanted to know a bit more about this because honestly, I have not covered Ash the Creation in some time, not since I really covered some of their PvE stuff. So I wanted to get some, some more up-to-date information from some creators that are more, more tabbed in than I am. So I reached out to Twitter of all places. But Twitter was a good place because I follow uh, Rive Genesis and Nice Gaming and they were able to give some really some good context. Rive Genesis says that most Ashes creators will say the same thing. The biggest fans say that corruption penalties are so big that there will not be a lot of people griefing others in PvP. However, we don't know the actual numbers behind how bad the penalties truly are yet. And we know that you only become corrupt if you actually kill someone who didn't fight back. If they fight back at all, you don't become corrupt, which opens up plenty of potential griefing where you damage some down to say 10% repeatedly, so they can't really do anything PvE wise. I really liked Rive's comment here because I think it really gets down to the lingering concern here is how, how intense will this be? How will it work in practice? How will this system work if it's based off of killing and not attacking and how are they going to deal with some of the abuses of the system in that way, the, the, the way that Rive mentioned in their tweet? Well, Nice Gaming had perhaps an answer to that question. A little bit. Ash of Creation's entire system of corruption will help deter griefing. Furthermore, harassment is a bannable offense. Most PvP engagement designs are consensual, and while the opportunity to PK exists, it will be seldom in theory due to how penalizing it is. I think the biggest part here is going to be coming down to what denotes harassment and how heavily is it going to be enforced. I've included links to both of their channels below, so if you're really interested in Ash Creation, I definitely recommend checking them both out for more up-to-date information as it comes out. They're, they're both great in, in, in dissecting. I think the gist of both of these is kind of in line of where I'm thinking of it though. Ash of Creation will be a game with PvP and PvE, but depending on how they tune the corruption system, it could possibly eliminate or push griefing to the point where it's not really an issue. It'll of course need a lot of fine tuning, and it'll probably be one of those systems that gets constantly patched and reworked, not just during tests, but through a live setting as well. So for me personally, I'm perhaps less worried about PvP and Ash to Creation than I have been in the past, but I also feel myself questioning. Wouldn't an opt-in system with bonuses just be simpler? It feels like a long lap for a simple solution. But hey, if it lets me experience this really interesting, like story arching system that really just kind of makes quests not suck, well, I'm I'm in. <laughs> and I guess I'll find out soon, hopefully, if they if uh, Intrepid Studios can meet their Q3 Alpha 2 target, because I'll be playing it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Redder Flynn, and I hope you have a wonderful day.